Oh fam, what's going on? Um, I want to take the time to talk a little bit about a couple of things. It is the 20th anniversary of 9-11. Well, it was yesterday. And I have some basically bitter uh, sweet memories. I know exactly where I was when I heard about the 9-11 attacks. I had just moved back to LA after finishing undergrad for Morehouse. And I remember at the time I was living at my grandmother's place over in Linwood, California, which is, those of you who are not from LA, um, Linwood is the city that's right next to Long Beach and Watts. It's, um, I, I, would, I would say probably about maybe a mile east or two miles east of Watts and probably about it's right next to, to Long Beach but that's exactly where I was when um, when I heard about the 9-11 attacks I had just got a job I was working actually at um, this this home, this facility that was used for juvenile delinquents and it was my day off and I can remember when I first got to, um, I just first got to LA, back to LA and my grandmother had said to me, she was like, Rashad, look at this thing that's going on here in New York and I remember flipping through every single channel even the paid ones, HBO, Cinemax, movie uh, channel, and Showtime, and they show the 9-11 attack. They show the, uh, the planes crashing into the Twin Towers. It was, um, it was surreal in terms of what was going on. Uh, I tried to call some of my friends I went to school with out in New York. Um, phone lines were blocked. I couldn't reach anyone. I remember that I couldn't reach anyone. Um, I tried to call my friends in Pennsylvania. I tried to call my friends over in Washington, DC. Same exact thing. It was just a completely surreal experience that, that I had never, or at that time, no one in this country had ever seen before. And I remember um, just talking to people that I knew, talking to my friends. I talked to one of my best friends, my friend Conrad. I remember talking to him. Um, I remember talking to to other people that I knew. And a lot of folks were just afraid. The consensus was, we got to go out here. We got to get these terrorists. We got to get these bastards. I, on the other hand, was sitting back and I was looking at, at the situation um, holistically, I wanted to know what the facts and what the and what the the data was surrounding all this, and why did it happen? Because there was a lot of anti-Islamic sentiment after that happened, and uh, and of course, what came after 9/11 was the Patriot Act, the, the controversial Patriot Act, something I never supported but nonetheless got through through Congress. Something so controversial that it gave the government the authority to be able to spy on you through your cell phone, your emails, put cameras on every street corner within America. And if, if, they, felt and if they felt it was necessary to detain you, for an allotted period of time that they saw fit, which is exactly what they did. You got people that were allegedly involved in the 9-11 attacks that went to Guantanamo Bay and then they were moved to another um, prison. And some of these people, no one has ever heard from them. We don't know where they are. The lawyers don't know where they are. Uh, the public doesn't know where they are. The family doesn't know where they are. The government allegedly doesn't know where they are. They just basically disappeared. 
This is what was happening to people during this time. I bring this up because I'm not going to say, you know, the V word, but it reminds me of what we see right now in terms of this um, medication they're trying to force the public to take. Now, of course, there's been, it's been FDA approved. There's been uh, reports that it's safe and nothing's gonna happen to you and blah, 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 blah. But it still should be the choice of the public whether or not you wanna take this. We don't know the long-term effects of it. And this whole entire notion that, that you're gonna bully and force people and mess with their money and mess with their livelihood to take some medication that um, none of us know the long-term effects of is moving in that totalitarian George or Orwellian style of government, which is where we already are. We've been here for a long time, actually. And 9-11 kind of opened up the gates for a, lot of, for a lot of this. There was a good documentary that came out years later. It was called Loose Change, and I think it's a part two. Loose Change part two. And um, that talks about some of the things that the mainstream media wouldn't discuss, like the gag orders that was put on the um, NYPD uh, officers and, and also the firemen that were there at the scene. Um, some of the people that worked at the Pentagon, the gag order that was that was placed on them, uh, because you had, for instance, two officers and two, and you had several firefighters that said they saw explosives that actually came from the bottom of the twin towers. That was in the news for a second. I remember that, and then they 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 wiped it out. These are things that that um, I remember specifically during that time. And the country, I think, was on the verge of a revolution. I think that socially and I think economically, well, not economically, but definitely socially, the country was on the verge of a revolution. It's interesting that was 20 years ago because... Uh, 20 years ago, I was in my early 20s. I was a lot more optimistic about the world. I didn't um, particularly have this 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 jaded view of of justice and and even about the entertainment industry because I was just starting off in that industry and didn't really fully understand what I was getting myself involved in in to at the time I was a bit naive which is understandable most young people are very passionate and optimistic about what it is they want to pursue but also during that time um The country was on was on scale of a full-fledged revolution, I think, at that time. George W. Bush was not a very popular president. He wasn't popular at all. I actually did a one-man show a few years after 9-11. Um, it's, 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 it's on this channel, as a matter of fact, talking about George W. Bush and some of the things that he did, his antics. Um, some of the quotes I actually used in the one man show were things that George W. Bush actually said. I didn't, you know, the comedy with him wrote itself, which was the interesting thing about George W. Bush. But back to my point about 9-11, I find it very interesting that the liberal media, CNN particularly, they had no problem sticking it to George W. Bush and calling him out and Dick Cheney out on a lot of things that they were doing and not doing involving 9-11. Um, and they talked about Halliburton and, and how Halliburton got contracts for the pipeline. Um, 
and the Carlisle group, which was, which was the group that, that George W. Bush and his father were a part of, had connections with, um, with the Saudis and also the father of Osama bin Laden. These are things that um, they spread out to the public and, and rightfully so, those things should be spread out to the public. But what I find very interesting is that in today's climate, when the Democrats are using a lot of the same tactics that the Republicans did back in the early 2000s, which is fear, fear mongering, you need to take this medicine or you're going to, um, or we're going to, or if you don't take it, you're going to die. If you don't take it, there's going to be massive deaths all over the place. If you don't take it, we can't, we can't get rid of it. We can't neutralize it. We can't do anything. You can't do anything. So don't ask any questions. Trust us. We know what we're talking about. And they, and they're specifically targeting black people to take this, whether it, whether it's the Democrats or Republicans. I mean, I heard Fox News, Fox News, uh, the, the, uh, the lieutenant governor of Texas called out and said that black people specifically are the reason why uh, COVID-19 is spreading, which is a lie because the majority of people that have COVID-19, majority of cases are not black people, they're white. We only make 14% of the population in Texas. We only make, I think about, um, I think about 15, 16% of the population. But the way that he tells it, you would think that we make about 80% of the population. And you would think the Democrats were, were any better, but they're not. Every single time I've seen Biden's press secretary up in public, she talks the same way the Republicans do. But instead they use cold words. They say people of color is what they do. We needed to, to slow down the spread of COVID-19. This is affecting people, especially in communities with people of color. That's a cold word for black. She, she, she won't say black, but that's pretty much who she's talking about when, when you use cold language like that. But I find it very interesting that they're not calling out the Democrats um, on this same Aurelian style of, of governing the way they did the Republicans back in the 2000s. And it was the, the in, let's be honest, it was the debacle of George W. Bush. He messed up so badly as a president that you saw the rise of Barack Hussein Obama, which is another story. But um, I know I'm covering and I'm saying a lot of different things. But 9-11 holds a very transformative part of my life. And I think a large reason for that is because that was the point of my life where I was really getting out into the world and starting to become my own man. And for those people who know me, even some of my younger family members who don't know me as well as I would like them to, that's, pro that's part of the reason why I take some of the stances that I do. I didn't grow up in the um, post-civil rights era of my parents. I grew up in, 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 a, in an era of resistance. I grew up in an era where we, you know, were defying authority, defying the police. And I grew up in an era where the government openly used fear to try to control the youth. That's the era that I grew up in. That's the era where I was a man and going out into the world and trying to pursue my endeavors and become my own person. I reflect on this day for a lot of different reasons. And that's definitely one of them.
Um, and it was, it was a time that I got reconnected back with my Los Angeles roots because I've been in Atlanta for a, for about five years. So coming back to LA, things were different. It wasn't the LA I grew up in. It wasn't the LA that I was accustomed to being around as a kid. And it was in LA that I saw with uh, that with the eyes of a stranger. I was a stranger in my own hometown when I came back. And that's pretty much what I remember about that time when 9-11 happened. Everything changed. Everything changed. I mean, it got to the point where you couldn't, you know, um, I remember I remember before 9-11 taking a, taking a plane, it only it took you maybe about a half an hour, 15 minutes for you to get to an airport. But, but after that, you had to get to an airport at least two hours before your flight took off because you may not make it to your, uh, to your plane after that. They made sure that you didn't, that you packed lightly. That's how things were before 9-11. Changed the world, changed everything. Completely changed everything. And it was the day that American citizens willfully gave up their freedom. And we're still doing it now. I'm not sitting up and telling people not to take the medicine. I'm not going to say that. I think that it should be a choice. Do I agree with what Biden's doing? No, I don't. And I've said it before that, particularly for us as black people, we had no reason to vote for Joe Biden or Donald Trump for that matter. I'm not a Trump supporter. For those of you who have tried to label me as such, I am not a Trump supporter. But I do think that you have a choice. You can think for yourself. And in this scenario, you have three choices. Vote for Biden, vote for Trump, or don't vote at all. If the options that are presented to you are not beneficial for you. There was nothing that Joe Biden was putting on the table that was specifically beneficial to black people. He never said that he would do anything for us. He spat in our faces when we brought that up. So why would you vote for him? And he's made it very clear that he doesn't intend to do anything tangible for us. And now just like George W. Bush utilizing the same fear propaganda with 9-11, they're using this pandemic this, this uh, disease, this outbreak to scare people once again to give up more of their rights. And at some point, I say that all of us have to make a decision. Are you going to sit up and let the government dictate to you what you should or should not do, even if, even if it potentially kills you? Causes you heart complications, complication, uh, makes your blood, makes your brain bleed or anything else, or gives you long-term uh, defects just because the government said they should do, that you should do it. I thought we're supposed to be in America, but then again, I have no illusions about this. This is what America has always been, at least for us, it has. And that's what 9-11 absolutely represents to me, is that it was um, a day that, just like, what, just like when Trump got in office, that people who are not used to being marginalized get a taste of what it feels like to be black in this country. So, 9-11 was a, was a surreal day. In a, in a horrific day. I mean, 
anybody who lost um, a, a, a family member or friend or lost their life involved in that incident, my heart goes out to them. I respect them. And I hope that one day they'll, they'll be able to get peace. But I do think that it's the job of the people of this country to stand up and not go down this totalitarian road that we seem to be going on. Because they're pushing 1984 in 2021 and they were pushing 1984 in 2001 and that's what 9-11 means to me